Section 2.2 is titled Solving Equations by Multiplying or Dividing. We want to talk about two properties again, the multiplication property of equality, which says that you can multiply both sides of an equation by the same number, and the statement will still be true. So for example, if a equals b, we can multiply both sides times c and still have a true statement. In our example, we have 6 equals 6. When we multiply both sides by 3, we end up with 18 equal to 18. Similarly, the division property of equality states you can divide both sides of an equation by the same number, and the statement will still be true. So for example, we have a equals b, and as long as c is not 0, then you can divide both sides by c and still have a true statement. So in the example, we have 8 equals 8. Dividing both sides by 2, we end up with 4 equals 4. So let's solve the equation and check our solution. We have negative 6x equals 18. Remember, we want to undo what's happening to x. Right now, it's being multiplied by a negative 6x, so we want to divide both sides by negative 6. So on the left, we get x, and on the right, 18 divided by negative 6 is negative 3. We want to check our solution by plugging our answer in for x. So negative 6 times negative 3 does that equal 18? And in fact, it is 18. So the left side equals the right side. Our answer checks out. That's how we know it's correct. Number two, 1.2c equals negative 1.44. So we need to divide both sides by 1.2 to get c by itself. And here you can use a calculator Although if you know that 100, what 144 divided by 12 is, you should be able to get this. But negative 1.44 divided by 1.2 is a negative 1.2. And again, we want to check our solution. So we're going to take 1.2 times negative 1.2 because that's what we got for C. Does it equal negative 1.44? Well, negative 1.2 times 1.2 is a negative 1.44. So our answer checks out. We have a true statement, so we know we're correct. Again, when solving equations, there's really no excuse to get it wrong because you can always plug your answer back in to check. A couple more examples if you'd like to pause the video here and try these on your own. <clears throat> I'm not going to check the solution on these two, but you should be checking. So we need to divide by negative 5 on both sides, and we get that t equals 3. We need to divide by 4 on both sides, and we get y equals 9 over 4. This does not reduce, and remember you do not have to change it to a mixed number, so you can leave it as 9 over 4. Hopefully you got both of those right, and if you didn't, you can see where you went wrong. Now let's look at some with division. We have n divided by 7 equals negative 1.2. Remember, we always want to undo what's being done to the variable. Right now, it's being divided by 7. The opposite of division is multiplication. So we need to multiply both sides by 7. Those 7s cancel, and we get n equals negative 1.2 times 7 is negative 8.4. And you check your answer <coughs> by plugging negative 8.4 in for n and dividing it by 7 and that should equal a negative 1.2. If you check it in a calculator or do it longhand, you do in fact get negative 1.2 equal to negative 1.2, so our answer checks out. Number six is very similar. We have five equals y divided by negative six, so we wanna multiply both sides by a negative six. So we get negative 30 equals y, and if we want to check our answer, we plug the negative 30 in for y and see if we get both sides equal to one another. So we have 5 equals negative 30 divided by negative 6 is a positive 5, so our answer checks out. Okay, number 7 is a little different. Um, it's multiplication. The z is being multiplied by a negative 9 over 4. So what we need to do is divide 
by a negative 9 over 4. Remember, you just undo whatever's being done. Now, on the right-hand side, I'm going to draw the division line and write negative 9 over 4. <coughs> but I'm going to remember that dividing by a fraction is the same as what? And you should be saying dividing by a fraction is the same as multiplying by a reciprocal. So on the left-hand side, we get z because the division of the fraction cancels. And on the right-hand side, we have 10 times negative 4 over 9. Remember, I had to flip the fraction in order to multiply. So we get that z is equal to, I can't do any canceling here if I put 10 over 1. 10 and 9 don't cancel, 4 and 1 don't cancel. I need to remember I have a positive times a negative, so my answer is going to be negative 40 over 9. <coughs> now, you can change that to a mixed number, or you can leave it as an improper fraction. And you should check your solution. If we plug that back in, negative 9 over 4 times a negative 40 over 9, we want that to equal the 10 on the right-hand side. You see the 9's cancel. 4 goes into 40 10 times. A negative times a negative is a positive, so we get that 10 equals 10. <coughs> Number 8, we have negative 6x equals 1 fourth. So we want to divide by a negative 6. We're trying to get the x by itself. So we have x equals 1 fourth divided by a negative 6. Now, this is a little tricky because the top is a fraction, but very similar to before, I can write negative 6 as negative 6 over 1, so that's like writing it as a fraction. So we have x equals 1 fourth times negative 1 over 6. Remember, dividing by a fraction is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. So this gives us x equals negative 1 over 24. And again, you could check your answer by plugging negative 1 over 24 back in for x and making sure that the left and right side are equal. This one's similar, but it's just written a little bit differently. Whenever the variable's up in the numerator, you can actually still write this. 2 fifths d equals 3 over 2. So we have multiplication here, 2 fifths times d, so we need to divide by 2 fifths, divide both sides by 2 fifths. So we get that d equals 3 over 2, and remember dividing by a fraction is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal, so multiplying by 5 over 2, and we get that d equals 15 over 4. That can't be reduced, and we can leave our answer just like that. So let's look at a word problem. We have a store that sells 12 foot boards for $4.80 each. What's the cost per foot? We need to write and solve an equation to describe the situation. So we have 12 foot boards that are $4.80 a piece, and we need the cost per foot. Hopefully what you're seeing is that we need to do some division here. So if we take 4.80, divided by 12, that should give us the cost per foot. <coughs> and in this equation, we're just doing the division right here, so we're taking $4.80 divided by 12, and that gives a cost of 40 cents per board, or per foot. Another way you could have written it is if the boards cost $4.80 each, we want to know that's 12 feet, because they're 12 foot boards, times the cost per foot. Now, if you solved that problem, you would solve it the exact same way. You would end up with a division problem, and you would get that the cost is 40 cents. In class, we'll work on worksheet 2-2, um, and that concludes this lesson.